Is there any changes or public comments to the add to the agenda? The hearing done. We're going to move right on. We're going to start with the budget for the Lampier Memorial Library. And we have two great gentlemen sitting here, Jim and Cy. What do you got to offer? Well, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. Yep. <coughs> it's just a <coughs> excuse me. A little bit up from last year because we were a little nervous that we hadn't originally thought about enough for oil, so we thought we better boost the oil up a little bit. Yeah. So then that yeah. is, is, as it says, 2.65% with that additional oil, uh, about $3,000. And as we did last year, we put in a placeholder uh, percent increase because we don't know what you folks are going to figure out for everybody else. So. Sure. Really, nothing controversial about it at all. I don't see. Anything. I was going to say, yeah, pretty mm -hmm. self-explanatory. You're pretty, right. Yeah, pretty, pretty close. Yep. Yeah. Try to keep it simple for you. Exactly. Thank you. Guys, got enough to do. That's right. <laughs> How about you, Roland? Um, Susan, you don't have a copy of this. Let me see. If we You're can awful small on there tonight, can't we? Wired you up or what? Justin, Justin might be able to switch the uh, controls to speaker, and so when somebody speaks, it takes up the screen. Well, I don't want the whole screen. <laughs> oh, it already it is doing it. Now we can see it. Except for the thing in the middle. Can we say hit the gun it button? What, what's that thing in the middle that's blocking us, Susan? He's going to get, can Justin, I think Justin can get rid of that. Yeah, yeah I remember Timber, last time Timber. Trouble. Right. Tim, <laughs> Tim or Justin will have to hit um, OK on that to get rid of that white block. There we go. Now you can speak, Susan. I, I just say when people present, if you'd have them come up to the table so they're closer to the mic so it's easier oh, to hear yeah. them. Okay. Just slide up a little bit, gentlemen, if you would. And probably to record them as well. The recording is started. Did you hear Jim, Susan, when he was talking about his budget? You're muted. Oh. Yeah, I could find the mute button. Yeah, no, I got it. You were, oh, you were able to hear him? Okay, good. Yeah, but you just barely. So I figure if they come okay. up closer, it's also for recording. It's a bit easier to hear them. Okay. And I just three to four feet of that speaker. Yeah, pulling up a little bit more. Yeah, we're friendly. You can come up. Susan, I just sent you a photo of that budget. If you didn't have it, there. No, I don't see anything. Anything that sticks out? No. No huge increases. Other than the lovely oil, right? Which is in control. Just, that's right. You just don't know. You don't know, unfortunately. So. And we are going to have one of our buildings freezing up in the middle of winter. Yeah, yeah. Sure. sure. Exactly. Yeah. No, you said a 2.65% increase from last year? Oh, here. You might as well take one of those. And yeah, we, we, have, we have an extra, so. Yeah, 26 so you don't need any materials, obviously. She didn't even increase that. No, nothing substantial. No. You good. were very kind to us last year. There so you go. Uh, You're in good shape. See if we can toe the line here a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big ask last year. <laughs> Reasonable ask. Necessary. Last yeah. year, nece yeah. last year was necessary. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, the need was a lot higher. The need yeah, from the yeah. community was a lot higher. I remember. Yeah. So, so Ron, we just accept or we take it and yep. we just exactly, exa that. yeah, we'll, exactly. We'll take all the information, bundle it together, and towards uh, just before Christmas time, we'll try to bundle it into a first draft. Okay. And then after that, when we see the sort of the real story as everything gets compiled you'll have to start making some decisions but like you said it's self-explanatory you did a great job gentlemen and yeah. we appreciate it and 
Do you have any other questions of us? Good. No? Okay, so it looks good. Mm -hmm. and, and, hey, thank uh, you so much. I really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, yeah. guys. I feel guilty leaving you. You know, nobody here. I know. Come up and we're fun to hang out. Oh, we don't know. And you guys yeah. are making a great team. I'm impressed. I don't think we're going to set ourselves all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I usually hunt on the other side. I usually hunt on the other side. Yeah. On the lake. Yeah. <laughs> now. Thanks again. Yeah, see you soon, guys. Too old. Nice to meet you, Sally. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. You saying that to you, Susan? And probably the wrong. <laughs> Can't find the mute button. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. Whoops. So Roger Marcou is next, but uh, he said he could make it here about 6.30. Oh, okay. He called me a little earlier. Okay. Is that the sheriff? It is. <laughs> is it, yeah. Uh, we got a budget. And, you know, I don't have mine. Didn't come on the phone. Your agenda? Yeah. You Brian did? finally sent me one. Yeah, I sent it. Oh. Had yeah. the agenda paper on it. Oh, really? Mine had two dots. You had to click on All two. I got to do is look at the desk, right? Thank you, sir. There. Yeah, both, both the library budget and the sheriff budget were being submitted tonight, um, probably in paper. So if you get, hopefully Roger will bring copies or Justin will have to go upstairs and make copies. And let's see, what else can we do? That Let's get these warrants out of the way. Let's do that. Well, what, if, well, okay, what, what about the highway? Yeah. Are we going to talk about that later, Ron? Uh, no, that's about 15 minutes, if you want to try to fill that in yeah, now. That would, that would fill in the spot here before Roger gets here today. Yeah, that would work. Okay. Yeah, so I, <clears throat> there should be a paper copy of the highway capital plan or capital budget just as a reminder uh, state law says that if you have impact fees for new development uh, some some towns will have impact fees for road impact fees some have school impact fees some have open space impact fees if you have any of those fees added on to each new house uh, then the town is required to have an adopted capital plan and that means public hearings and all that business so that you have, um, and it's a little bit more formal uh, math. <laughs> the math that you have to follow has to be supported by backup documents, et cetera, so that you have a valid fee. Uh, we don't do that. We've never done that. We have a draft capital budget and that is used primarily for the next year, which in this case is FY24 to highlight the needs of the town that uh, you've talked about informally, but are intending to do, such as a truck replacement at eight year cycle, a greater uh, replacement, so on. So I'm gonna share my screen to show just, just for the sake of the uh, video, the handout that should be on your desk. Um, and basically, there's a whole bunch of questions in here. I, t I told Brian earlier that the in information is here, but there, there's no answers here. There's a lot of information, but no answers. And I'll explain that in a second. So if you look at the capital budget for highway, I confirmed with Mark the equipment plan. And that's that long list with the 2017 Dodge 202's gra um, gravel screen that whole list. So those are the items that Mark intends and the town has intended to replace on a regular cycle. And you can see the life cycle column there that is right next to it, 8, 25, 8, 8, 10, 15, so on. So when those years come up and come due, then the board at this time of the year has to start figuring out how to pay for those things. And we do that in a couple of ways. One is we try to spread out the capital purchases through the next five, six, seven, eight years. So they're not all bunched in one year. And you also have an annual contribution that you make uh, through the budget, which is the uh, second line down from the top where you see the 
estimated beginning balance. And then below that, you have fiscal year fund 22 contribution. That's the last page in your town budget where you put away a certain amount for capital purchases and to fund the reserves. One of those is highway. So last year you did 160,000. Uh, this current year is 130. And it went down to, to deal with a whole bunch of uh, costs that were related to center road and try to shift money towards those payments um, to get to get that paid off. But it can't stay low forever. So for FY24, in order to stay pretty close on track to funding future capital, there's a proposal in here, which is, do you want to make a, a bullet list of questions? This is the first one. Uh, do you want to increase highway capital fund reserve from 130 to 175. So that's $45,000 more that appears to be needed to stay positive in the sense of being able to have cash and loan money for future capital purchases. The other question in there, which is another discussion is the ARPA money, whether or not um, you want to use $200,000 to buy the replacement truck for Mark French next year. And you'll see that in yellow towards the top uh, is revenue. And then you see the expense for the 2015 replacement single axle at 200,000. Another question in here is the greater, we don't have enough money in FY25 to replace the 2010 greater. That'll be 15 years old. And that was the expected life that we picked and it comes due for a replacement in FY25. So knowing that we don't have $400,000 at that point, uh, that's a five-year loan, five times the 80. Um, them are 400,000, the greater is now, or we'll be in 25, that's what he says. That's, well, <laughs> I'll give you a quick quick uh, yeah. math, math thing. So the town of Johnson just bought a similar greater for 335. If the inflation rate keeps up at the 8% for equipment, which right. it has been, there'll be 406,000 in two years by the time we get there. Now, now, did they get a wing and everything on, on their new one? No, that's what I asked Mark. I said, if you're going to order something similar, and he said, yes, but I didn't get all the details, uh, then that would that's kind of how we get the 400,000. What we haven't included in that one yet is what the trade of that current 2010 is going to be. And that, right. that may be that may be 50, 75, 100,000. I have no idea. So when we get closer to that time, and I asked Mark to start working on it, uh, try to figure out what a trade or or, or, or or straight up sale, if we can find a buyer, what we're going to get. Johnson decided not to trade, but to try to sell. So it'll be interesting to see what the market is this year for the Johnson greater. If Johnson can get 100K or 75K for a 15 year old greater, then we would reduce that 400,000 appropriately to 300,000 or 325 or something. Uh, so once you get out three years, four years for sure, the numbers out there are more like placeholders. The current year and the proposed year, we try to get pretty accurate because that was the, that's the number that you're trying to budget for. So we've got the um, greater question. And then the last item we have is the payoff on center road. So if you look at FY23, the current year, 611,500 is anticipated to be due uh, to Union Bank on May in May of 23. That's the blue highlight. If we apply 100% of current year paving, which is 180,000 up at top, and we apply 163,000 of FEMA reimbursement that we received last year from the Halloween storm, and we apply 196 that we're still waiting for from FEMA in FY23, and then we had budgeted 143,800 for a loan payment. If you use all of that money, then you can get to the 600 and almost to get to the 100, 611,000, except that we still need 152,000 
700, which is also up top there, you see a town meeting voter approval from the unassigned fund balance. Um, so that would be a town meeting day vote to sort of close out that loan. Talked to Jennifer today about any other options and she's she's really all about investment and making the money work for us. She really is anti, and so is the board, historically as well as this board is sort of interested in getting rid of loan payments, especially with interest payments going up. Um, she would not do more than two, two years, because we did one year already. Um, she, she would hope that we could pay that off at the latest by May 24, if not with your um, approval by May 23, and along with the voter approval for that extra 152. So that's the, that's sort of the last question I had, or, or at least discussion point for your, the board to take away from this spreadsheet. There's a bunch of stuff going in here, a lot of big numbers, and some of it comes down to what your priorities are and how quickly you want to pay off loans and those kind of things. So the, the other the idea of paying off the loan, let's see, oh, would come from the potentially if we ask for the 152 at town meeting. Yeah, the, re the rest of it you already have sort of control over. Right. I see that, okay. The 152 is a, is a lot of money to, it's similar to last year's question with the 75,000. It'd be the same, the same town meeting article, just change the number to 152, 700. Yeah. So yeah. that town meeting vote approval 2023 from unassigned, that's the 152 that would be paying off the center road paving loan? Yes. And that's, that's a discussion point versus a formal proposal. This right. is just, this, this is how we're trying to put all these things together in one capital plan, but the, every decision affects everything else. So if you say, oh yeah, well, Center Road can be paid off in two years from now. So let's, let's readjust this whole plan for that. And then we can readjust that. If you say, no, keep Center Road, but try to figure out how to pay off the greater in one chunk and not take a loan. That's a whole nother scheme that we'd have to come up with to figure out how to do that. Ron, how yeah. how much do we, um, if we pay it off fully this May, how much money will we have for paving this summer? Well, you have you'll have whatever you put in twenty four, you know, for July after. You okay. won't have any. We deferred the fall paving, if you want to call it that, for the first half of twenty three. Right. And, if we wanted to pay and you pave anything with the 180,000, uh, we'd go out to bid in February or March and try to have a June 30 deadline to spend that money. If you if you simply defer paving and use it for loan payment, then the 180 is available through June 30. And then the new money, which I'd maybe put another 180 in paving, I'm not sure what that decision is going to be, but that would be available Ju July 1. July 1, okay. I think there was some discussion last year this time to use some paving money to help pay Center Road. It was like we took out a loan. We knew it was going to be a big project taking multiple years, but rather than spread out the work, you took out the loan knowing that there'd be money coming in multiple years. So it's like it's it's hit, it's hit or miss. The only problem with the loans, for example, is that um, the first year loan was 1.3 or some silly number. Then the renewal this past May was 2.4 five-ish, and I'm guessing that the May 23 renewal will be in this five, six range. So each time that we do that, um, you'll probably look at another 20, probably another 20, even if you pay some of that down, you'll probably pay 17,000 for this interest payment. Plus, if you take out another loan, you'll probably pay another 17, 20,000 because the rates are going up so much, even if you pay down the principal for the 23 renewal. So I think that's where um, Jennifer was saying the sooner the better because any kind of loan is going to be hurting, you know, going forward from here. Whereas 
like two years ago, it wasn't that bad to look at a 0.9 or 1.2. Right. And then the, of course, the bigger question is ARPA. We haven't talked about that before, but when we were trying to manage the, the cost of this plan, um, it wasn't working well. You can see the good, 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 insufficient, insufficient at the bottom. It was all good until Mark called today and added 200,000 for the, the screen. The gravel screen was just added today. So it was like, it just highlighted the fact that anything can change, but adding 200,000 right now is, um, put us into insufficient money for FY 28 and 29. Of course, you're looking out five years. So that itself is, is squishy anyway. It's not, it's sort of not hard numbers. But it's it's a plan versus a budget. Let's, you know, a hard budget. Yeah. So any top two roads what the town would be raising at town meeting? The estimated gain balance in the fiscal year fund twenty two contributions. Is that what yeah, the the fist. I can barely hear you, Justin. I don't know if you want to turn a mic towards you. But. Yep. So the top two here: the estimated beginning balance for a seven one in the fiscal year fund twenty two. Is that what would be raised and voted on at town meeting? Uh, no. The the what happens at town meeting day is that the the balance is just a carry forward in the reserve fund, but the second line, the fund twenty two contribution. This is a number that the select board puts in the budget and it's contained within the overall, you know, $2.9 million budget vote. So it is voted, but it's combined with all other, um, all the other expenses. The one that's called out separate as a special article is the 152 700, which is uh, reallocating unassigned fund balance to the highway reserve. That would be a, se a separate article in addition to the budget article um, that that contains that fund 22 contribution. And the 130, the 130 for the current year, um, is already in the budget. The 175 is the first one that I called out as do you want to add 45,000 to next year's budget? The 130 is already in the current approved budget and the 152 700 would be available this fiscal year if it's approved in March. You don't have to wait for that, but it's not approved yet. The 152 700. That's why it's sort of a, a little confusing, but if the voters say you can use 150,000 of unassigned fund balance, then that becomes available after town meeting day. You don't have, to, that's not tied to a fiscal year. Uh, you know, therefore, it's available for the May um, loan payment. So, that, I think for select board discussion purposes, life cycle is important. Uh, Mark was playing with the idea of going to six years on trucks, and because that would be under the seven year maximum warranty. And that costs a lot more money than we can do quickly. If the board was going to say, can you transition to a six year recycle um, life cycle on trucks? That would take a little bit of thought because we don't have enough money to do it at eight year cycle. Right. Uh, the other issue is the ARPA. Do you want to tap into that for that truck? And then the, um, and the 45,000. So those, those three, I think the greater is going to be fixed as a loan. I don't, I don't know if we can have enough op opportunity to not have a loan. That would be great if we did, but I don't know where that money would come from all at one year. I like the idea of using the ARPA money. Mm -hmm. When's the, the greater is needed? The only, the only thing I see down here is that um, Mark's pickup, he's got that on a cycle of eight years. 
as cheap as you can buy them pickups at towns. You should get rid of that thing in four years, five years at the max. Because eight years is just too long. Even the other one, we went too long with it. You know, and you're buying a diamond dozen towns there, then pickups. Eight years too long. For, and that's his pickup? Yeah, you see like where it says down there, um, one, two, third, one down, four oh, pickup, four pick yep. foreman, 230. He's going to have that thing eight years. As cheap as they are, the towns could buy them for hardly nothing. You're, you're crazy to keep that for eight years. And he just got that. Huh? At 21. 21. Yeah. yeah. So at four years, out the door. Yeah, but that's when the greater, that's when we need. Yeah, but then pickups, lot. you can trade them pickups, chastity, for a little bit of nothing to town scan. Oh, okay. By the time you get done trading that one in, and in, in eight years you ain't gonna have nothing. Yeah, I think I think what Roland's also saying is that the earlier you trade, the easier it is to trade. You know, to upgrade, so to speak. So because you, you have value, if you wait eight years, you're gonna pay more full boat because your your truck's not gonna be worth yeah, as much as it. Especially is the, the price of them. You know, what we have to do with the, with the other one he had. What happened to it? Remember? Yeah, that was a trade in. Yeah. Yeah. That was a trade in, all right. We had to put a new body on it. And <laughs> we traded a lot of parts. <laughs> Let's not get that again. Uh, yeah. So I guess, you know, to conclude for tonight, uh, look at that. Think about those questions. We'll revisit again. And we'll, Jennifer and I will continue to look at with Mark and see if there's any more edits. But we like to get this pretty well ironed out during the budget season so that you have a you know a, a good capital budget draft because we're not going to adopt it but it's a good draft to use in your final budget decisions in january i have to uh gonna have to look at some other graders besides john deere four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> there's oh, other ones out there i have one more question for you ron so for like the warranty on the town trucks, do we ever go over as far as mileage goes or is that only the year that you really have to concern about? Like Yeah, it's just it's the years that we run out of time on. Yep. Well Roger's here. Welcome Roger. <laughs> Good to see you. Hello. I, I don't believe I met Justin. Gentleman. Justin Roger Mason. Marco. Roger Marco, sure. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Who we got on that? You are a lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please ever. <laughs> Who's on the? Uh, Susan's on there. Susan. Ron's on there. Hi, everybody. Hey there. Is that it? Is Hello. Okay. Oh. Thank you. And he'll take them. Did you get the other one I sent, Susan, for the library? Uh, for the that I sent out? Yes, I got the library. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna send you photos of these. Okay. And then you'll I thought you were going all electric cars. <laughs> <laughs> How much do those things cost now? I don't know. Terrible. Can you even Terrible. get them? Probably can't even get them. You can't even get regular police cars. Oh, really? Well, don't feel bad. We've had a... We've got one in Buffalo, New York, and one in Massachusetts. That's a good trip. Jeez. It's cheaper to have them pay for them to bring it out, so... You're just going to pay someone to go get it? Yeah. Okay. And you don't have enough staff as it is. Time <laughs> right. and all of that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Buffalo's a good trip. Yeah. Okay, so this is Hospital and Facing Insurance. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We tried to get away with increases like that. Can you handle it? 
It's difficult with that. <laughs> We're sending I pictures come from to a whole Susan. different uh, era. Of time. <laughs> My credit dropped when we moved off. I didn't know she was going to be here. Yeah, she's not feeling well. And then who else are we missing? Matt. 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 We're not sure. I don't know where he is. I texted him. I think he um, is in a tree. Yeah. A tree. In another state, I'm pretty sure. Right. <laughs> they don't give you a telephone free, Roger. <laughs> No. That's all money. Which, which one are you looking at? Early patrol or communication? Top of it. Don't have two yeah. early patrol. Top of it. Top of Yeah, we're having a meeting on communications. First of December ish, which is we have this sheriff's advisory group that's been in effect since Gardner started it 40, 50 years ago, whenever it was. And we have to meet. It's supposed to be twice a year, but at least once a year, it's in December. And a representative from each town comes over and we talk about what's going on in communications, capital projects, whatever, and then you look at the budget then. So, but I thought I'd give you that. Kind of a, oh, okay. So this will be up. more. This is, this is going to be patrol tonight. Okay. Well, the, the patrol sheets, I've got one that's broke out. Yeah. If we were to keep it at 3%, and which would end up with a $60,000 deficit that, you know, we, in the past, the Sheriff's Department has tried to help out and, and um, use money from other sources where we could. And then they, there's a second patrol budget with an 8% increase, and that's what it looks like to each of the towns if you pay the whole whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, and no, mine are the same, you know, right? Right there. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. Good? Sorry. Yep. Okay. Here. I know, right? <laughs> Hey, you want to I've check looked things. at numbers all day. I can't. We, we look at budgets and numbers and okay. say, how do we get miss it. that? We make mistakes. So. 3%. Okay, got it. So, so, the original meeting we had, we talked about the possibility of the towns coming back to the boards talking about ARPA. So, and I using some ARPA funds to help. You know, I think Susan's idea was to use a couple or get a couple of cards with that, which is 120 for two years. So, um, and that got shot down in Johnson and in, I guess there was no interest in Wolcott and I don't know what Hyde Park said. So, Wolcott had a meeting, I was double booked at another meeting that night, and then I had the Johnson meeting Monday night. What they're supposed to call or text or email and what Beth and you know what the board down there asks is if we would be interested in a three-year contract at five percent a year as opposed to the full eight in one year so you know of course it's so tough because we don't know if the economy is going to improve or how much worse it's going to get or whatever to project out three years so um but anyway, so that's, you know, that's pretty much the deal. Um, you know, the expenses coming up in year two or, or next year, the year after, as well as this year, is, is that we've got that. The board, the previous board said, told me to go ahead and, and uh, obtain a grant from the federal government, a COPS grant, and, and to add that, to add another deputy where we keep these guys from having to work alone. Um, they're still working alone, but it's like from two in the morning to seven. But the rest of the time, we can pretty much double them up. But then you've got vacations, you get sick, and all that. So, um, so the way that that Cox grant works is the first year, which we're in now, they'll pay seventy-five percent of an entry-level uh, salary. 
then the year two, they'll pay 50% and you pay 50. Year three, they'll pay 25, you pay 75. And then the catch is the fourth year, you have to completely fund that person for that year. If you don't keep that person after that, you know, they, you know your commitment with the feds is done after that fourth year. For that fourth year, we have to completely fund them. So what Karen and I got to figure out is, all right, if you give people raises and that money, what's that look like next year and year after and, and what happens? How can you, what happens if you lose that person? Like the funding grant <laughs> yeah. just stop? Are they under contract? Right. Well, we have to replace that person. Okay, so you could replace it if, yeah, we if have that to, was we, to happen. You know, we have to, to honor that contract as best we can. Gotcha. Because okay. trying to give them the money back is, it's, that, it's impossible. Yeah. Right. yeah, so. Okay. That's so that's, I just was so that's, that that's what's really, if you look at the budgets, it's, you know, the salaries are a bit down from last year. Uh, you know, but, you know, insurance, we don't know. We got hit last year. Well, Brian, you know, well, yeah. maybe you don't. Yeah. But the um, treasurer's office hit all of us with, I think it was like 11% yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, huge. And which was not budgeted, an increase in our, in our, um, in our retirement. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping this year, now the elections are done, we're hoping to be able to finally get that 20 year retirement, which is going to kind of flip uh, what we're paying for retirement. It's gonna put more onus on them, I think around 11%, something like that, that they're gonna to have to pay. And we're in the employee, employer is gonna pay less for yeah. that particular program. Um, when do you find out about that? We got a new treasurer, so yeah. I'm gonna start, you know why. Rich Westman and Dan Noyes and those guys had it in the, had a bill last year, I think. But the, the legislature pushed back and said, we need a study. So they completed the study. The study was done by the present treasurer, who of course did not endorse doing that. <laughs> so we'll see what happens yeah. after there's a new regime. And mm -hmm. I have some optimism because I've met with him twice. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's going to help us with our retention uh, because I seem to have good luck getting young deputies, getting them trained, but keeping them because the other agencies that do have a little bit more to offer than we do right now with the retirement and everything, yeah, they pick them. Yeah, I like that guy, you know, and, yeah. and they take them. Yeah. So, but we're. We're completely full staff right now. Our last person's in the academy. Oh, More down at the seventy-five hundred dollars sign-on bonus. And they jumped. Mm -hmm. More down and still jumped double figures in their police department. Oh, they do. So. And they're fully staffed. Both of them. They no. They can't be. Marshall's not. Yeah. I think it might be. It might be now with one going to the academy. Oh. Or something. Oh. So. Okay. But. You know, I, I, I have to say this is, yeah, you're looking at a serious amount of money in all three communities, but you're looking at what some of the other counties, particularly Chittenden County, are looking at for crime. And the fact that we have three very good police departments in this county that are working 24 7, I think, is helping keep some of the violence out of our area here. I mean, we had the shooting. We had the shooting last spring, but uh, you know, but generally we're you know we're we're conducting a lot of drug investigations and what have you. Just keep hammering. Does the money still do what it used to do? Come back into the area when you make bust or? Uh, yes, but since but. COVID, I, we haven't got a penny, and that's just because the asset forfeiture unit in um, in Washington. Nobody did anything during COVID. They all went home. So now for the entire country. Oh, wow. So now they're trying to get caught up. And, um, and then we got the legislature last year in the House that came out with a bill to do away with that, to, to prevent us from 
accessing federal money. And I testified against it and wound up the chair of the committee <laughs> getting the information together that, look, we're not abusing this money. Right. Yeah. You know, you got you know, apartments in Arizona that are getting boats and they don't have water. For, <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, I don't doubt that it is being abused in other places. But sure. Like I say, pretty consistently down there, don't take the problem that's somewhere else and think that that's the way it is here. So, yeah, that's right. Here's something about over in St. J, the sheriff's department, there's something about bonuses. And he's talked about in our office there about uh, what well, we, we, bonuses. We, we give bonuses. Yeah. We had to start competing, but, yeah. but what I used to do is give a bonus and it would be. You had to guarantee you'd stay for two years. They'd leave anyways, and then I'd have to fight to get the you know yeah. prorated part of the bonus back. So now what we do is like it's a three-year bonus, and after the end of the first year, you get a third of it. Second year, so it's more of a retention. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll see. Yeah. How long that works? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a try. So how many how many you got on the road? Um, I have. Six, six patrol a detective and then uh and then we've got the captain who's partially paid out of patrol and partially paid out of other sources so but we we have as good a a good a team as we've had since i've been around so mm -hmm. and everybody's you've been around for a couple of years 22. 20, is that it? 22. 22. Just, it just the like sheriff. So. Oh, okay, yeah. that's yeah, 40, why. 40. Okay. I, well, oh, I started in 1980. So. Dispatch it. Nope, hardly. Oh, that's right, too. Yeah. yeah. So, then we dispatch it. Six yeah. patrol, one detective, and one captain. Out of this budget? Yeah. It would be, right. it would be six patrol, a uh, detective, let me just let me count in my mind okay. here because I, I want to with this new guy. Let me make oh, sure, okay. Let me sure I got it right. Okay. Let's see with those two guys. <laughs> yeah, got those two guys. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's six, six and one. Okay. And, Cap is and Captain and, Scott. No. Yeah. It's Scott. It is Scott. Yeah. Okay. And he's paid. And that's he's, considered. He's paid partial. And that's considered full. That's enough. That's enough. We, well, it, it's not not two people in a car all the time. No. Yeah. Stowe has. Is that mandatory now? Stowe. Thirteen. No. No, uh, it's, it's not. Surprise. But what I found out is I always thought that geez, guys are leaving. Guys and gals are leaving because they don't have a twenty-year retirement and they're going to a twenty-year retirement. Well, what I found out in talking to some of the people that had left uh, is that they just didn't want to work alone. When you're on a night like tonight, and you're off in the Willy Wags and I get it. Plot Road, and then you got to go up to the border of Hardwick and Woolcut, and you're just running around, and it's really stressful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but uh, you know, Scott does a really, really good job with these these young guys, and uh, and we've got Chris Watson, who's been there for about 18 years now. We've got a couple guys that were up in Hardwick, uh, Danny Locke, who was here years ago, and our detective. We've got uh, Florian Delva and James Griffin and Brendan Marrier. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe we do have seven with the new guy in the academy. Oh, with the academy, yeah. yep. Yeah, so that's what it is. Plus yeah. one. So okay. we're really doing well with our diversity program. Good. I think I have, uh, um, I only have Heidi for uh, female deputies. Well, no, I've got Heidi and Grace for female deputies, but they're not in the, in the patrol. I have um, uh, with Eti down at the police academy. He's uh, um, from the Congo, so he's African-American, oh. and Delva is Haitian-American. Oh, cool. So in, in Delva, He's been on the road here for a while and got out of it. So, you know, we're trying to, we're, and we're getting 
like some of these people out of Burlington. And I think that, you know, the worst situation gets down there uh, because I was talking to a T about it and he says he has no desire to, to be involved in law enforcement down in Burlington. So, yeah. um, one of the other guys is from the Essex area, you know, and makes it a little harder when we have an emergency, a, a car accident to call people yeah, in as right it takes, yeah. but yeah. that's where I come in. I always come in with those things and Scott and, yeah. and uh, we can put a lot of people that aren't even paid in patrol. You know, well, you know, on the fire department and stuff like that, we get bad car accidents or something. I'll have, you know, four or five people out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with uh, you. Need to have two officers all too. the time. I yeah. Do. I no. Well, yeah. You're, you're in the business. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised it's not and the mandatory. state. The state makes it mandatory. Right? But well, yeah. Yeah, but this, you know, they they do a lot of things. They make mandatory, but they don't give you the money. Yeah, yeah. There oh you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. It's yeah. called unfunded mandates. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but the state don't run with two people. No, they're they're horribly horribly Cr short. They're short, 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 short handed. As far as us going out, yeah, they want us to have two officers whenever we go out. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, I can go out check on people. Yeah, no, that's safe. Yeah, yeah. safety. So, yeah, but they don't give us a weapon. They yeah, they, they try. Yeah. So you're going yeah. checking on people with, with no OC spray. Oh, okay. Yeah. As far as I know, it doesn't stop a bullet, but yeah. Never had to try it. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at. Okay. You know, the we, for the last I think three or four years we've been at three percent. You you guys just from everything else you do with your budgets, you know that prices have been going up and Everybody. I've been losing ground. You know, yeah. three percent. So, but we really, at the department, we want to do everything we can to help you guys have a budget that you can present in front of taxpayers that are mm -hmm. that is, you know, we get some chance of winning. So you said Johnson was proposing five percent. That was the. That was a proposal in, in that if, they were going to talk to you guys about. If, 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 if we did that, would that meet the needs? Well, that's what Karen and I have got to, and Norm, while he's still here, yeah. we, we've got to, now we've got to crunch some numbers to see, well, what's it look like if we give X percent of a raise to our people to try to remain competitive with the others? And then we've got this grant position. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what's that going to look like at 5%? And because the problem is, it's like the 3% is if you grit your teeth and you keep going, but you're not keeping up with everything at some point in time, if you're going to keep your operation going, you've got an astronomical, I need a hundred thousand dollars this year because I, I I didn't do it incrementally. Yeah, it becomes a sink or swim. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Well, Susan, if I can jump in, why at the meeting, Brian and I, and we talked about, and the towns talked about, um, if you look at Roger's budget, you'll see the, you know, as he's just coming from our highway budget, is, is with his cars trying to um, keep them up to date and spend the money. And what we had proposed, and obviously the other towns weren't interested in it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why they aren't interested in it. Um, was to use some ARPA money for for the for the various town parts of Rogers budgets that's doing the cars, so that if we invested some money in there, obviously obviously it's it's dollars that our local taxpayers don't have to put in but it would be an opportunity to give Roger a little cushion and and uh, and get a little forward motion on the number of patrol cars. Um, again, we were just trying to trying to think of ways that we could, that the towns could use a small portion of their ARPA money that, that helps um, not the tax burden be so high for a few years on, on our citizens, but also helps Roger as well. But apparently they didn't, they didn't like our brilliant thinking, Brian. <laughs> what yeah. what Johnson mentioned the night that Susan, that you weren't at the meeting, Chelsea, you weren't there, 
is that they have so many requests for that money. So and that seemed what you know seemed to be the, the fly in the ointment there. Yeah, but everybody does. Yeah, we do too. Yeah. Yeah, we got we got all kinds of requests, and that's where it comes down to the select board trying to make decisions as to what's the where where are we getting the most impact for our communities for our for our citizens. You can't um, I mean if but any any community, any of the, we smaller communities that aren't getting millions and millions and millions of dollars, and I'll bet even Burlington with millions of dollars is getting fifty million dollars in requests. As soon as people hear there's money, there's no there's never any shortage of of requests. So anyway, well it was it was worth a try. What the heck, mm. Ron? How would that look with using the ARPA money? As in. As in only Hyde Park using some to apply to the sheriff? Yeah. No. Well, yeah. Could we, or as again, using it to apply to buying uh, cars for the sheriff? Yeah, I think that there'd be some uh, formula changes. I, you know, because if you reduce, if nobody else is playing with that idea, and you say, well, we'll take off one cruiser, and I, Roger's got to come up with some formula to adjust our be down or well our what, what i what i think about this is here's here's the money here's the the deficit so it's a question of where you're going to get the money if some people just want to get it through their general fund you know then you, you know because i think there's a fear if they use arpa money that Okay, it didn't cost us anything of our out of our general fund, but when the ARPA money's gone, then you get that big jump. So I think that that's you know another thing that the folks are thinking. But there's there wouldn't be any formula change. It would be Johnson would decide to pay, pay it out of general fund. Hyde Park would pay it out, you know, pay some out of the ARPA, uh, unless you paid more than your share. So which you know would kind of alter the, the the formula that we've been using so yeah just we've been trying to we've had outside agencies requesting money and we've approved two agreements for money to go from our town arpa to their operating budget which is the fire district one and then north Hyde park eden fire district our fire department so if the money was going to go to the sheriff that we would do the same thing and usually those agreements under at least our u.s treasury rules are we buy things looking forward so we don't necessarily do that for the sheriff now we, none of the towns buys equipment individually for the sheriff we pay a fee based on the prorated cost of the budget so that's what i meant about formula trying to figure out how that would work um and I, I don't know how would you, we, we generally would have an agreement for a certain dollar amount for a very specific purchase to comply with our rules. So to say that we can just take 20,000 of ARPA and pay a portion of the bill down, I, I'd have to look at that more. I don't, I haven't looked at it at all, but I'd have to look at that more to make sure that's allowed. Top I think, of your head, what does it cost to put a car on the road? Well, we, 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 we have a car a year, and a car is probably, you know, c conservatively 50 grand when you get it all outfitted and everything. Let me see here. We should have, I think it's my cruiser. Oh, uh, it's at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. The 50, so yeah 50 grand. 50 grand, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't go down. Yeah. But, you know, quite bottom. frankly, every few years, you buy one, I'll buy another one. Because if you don't, to your point, you were talking about a pickup, you've got seven people. If everybody gets a car a year, yeah. somebody's gotta have a car seven years. So, you know, before their turn comes up. So what we do is, you know, what we've done in the past, we've had very, very good luck in having enough workers until recently to take on all of these other projects, uh, you know, guarding the homeless or uh, uh, guarding the motels in uh, in Chittenden County when nobody else would do it and all sorts of things like that. And then we, so we take some of that money and we reinvest it back into the community. 
So, which I don't mind doing because whenever I retire, I can't, it's not a private business. I can't take it with me. Exactly. So, but it's easy, it's easier to do that with the equipment. You know, what you really, really need to be sure about is the sustainability of the salaries for your people so that they feel that they have stability and, you know, and their job is, is safe. So. Mm -hmm. But if, if you want, you know, you can talk to Johnson and see what, you know, the way that they had it in mind and we'll continue. I'd love to, I'd love to, to be even, but, you know, 8% is a pretty good jump and, Mm -hmm. You know, get that. Yeah. But it's nice to have the patrol when you need it. And yeah, the second person. We we had this study that you know for you know just didn't quite pan out. Where, but right now we know if you were going to look at the state police, we know they're forty people short, at least forty people short. So, and, um, you know, you're, 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 you've got a couple other alternatives. You have state police, you can have your own police department, start your own police department, you know, take some of the equipment from the sheriff's department, bring it right over, and then, but you'd have the responsibility and the liability of everything that went along with that. Um, you know, I don't know, you could try contracting with one of the other towns like Morristown or something like that. Um, and you could just do nothing and just have the state police respond to, to calls. That's so, what Eden does, correct? Yeah. Did you ever, did you ever talk to Eden again to see if you could? I, I helped Eden a lot this yeah. summer with a particular problem that Ricky Morin was having. Oh, right. And, uh, and so, and I talked to, to Ricky like maybe three, four weeks ago. And what he has an interest in me is to come before the board. The problem is, is a sticker shock because Eden really would be paying about the same thing as, as Wilka, and that's about a couple hundred thousand. So, you know, what I propose to him is what I would propose to the board is that, well, what if we did it like in a five-year phased-in approach? Something like that, but it's it's really it's something up there that has to go before the the voters. So so it really wouldn't help the rest of the towns in the, if they even come on board? It would help, you know, our model for, for dispatch is it's like we got Berrytown and, and Hard Rock and Greensboro. The more people you have, the more flat the costs, the, the costs are spread out. So what you have to do when you look at anything like that to get bigger is to see how much overhead is that going to increase Correct. and and what benefit is there to our existing partners. Because I used to dispatch for Franklin County Sheriff's Department when they were in a bit of a hole. They would bring on six or seven people. They didn't have 24 coverage, but it, but come four o'clock, there's six people on, you know, and and so it really really wasn't um, economical, and and it made me think that look, stay small, but really really provide a good service for the partners that are paying. Mm -hmm. So that's. You know, I always keep it in mind, but now, Roly, really, if I took on a bunch of fire departments that had calls, not even every day, how many people would I have to add to be able to do that? Well, maybe not much, maybe not any at all. So then whatever money that you were, little money that you were able to bring in would go towards diminishing the overall costs of the communications <clears throat> budget, so. So is uh do you do you have just one dispatcher on the yellow? Mm -mm. You got no. two. No, we have we have ten total people. And yeah, at twelve hours a day without vacations and you know, <coughs> have you, we're supposed to have three on. Three. Yep. Three dispatchers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we're doing I don't know, 
twenty some odd thousand call, uh, 911 calls a year. So, and we're taking a lot of 911 calls from outside the area too, that the 911 board is not fully reimbursing us, but we're getting money back, which. So you sh so how does that work? So like for certain areas, they would ask for your help in dispatching and then so, those calls would come. So there's a difference between dispatching and call taking 911. Yes, yeah. call taking. So, yes, so I happen to be the chair <laughs> of the 911 board in, in the state. So what we do is, let's say that there's a bad day in Williston, state police in, what is it, French Hill or Sand Hill, whatever that oh, hill is. There in the Hill. That's all ice. Yeah. And so they've got every trooper and fire department and they cannot take any more 911 calls. So the call rings in there, it, the call sees nobody's picking up. So then it rolls to one of the five remaining PSAPs in the state. Whoever's been idle, because you have to sign into your position, whoever's been idle the longest gets the call. Oh, So we help each other out. Okay. It's a neutral aid thing. Yeah, so, oh. and right now they're having a very difficult time staffing Westminster, and... So that's overflowing on to you. Yeah, that's so, so uh, they're down 30 out of 60 people, <sighs> I think is the last I heard, so. 30? Wow. <laughs> so something something close to that, yeah. So okay. it's a good system because we have a way to help each other out. So dispatching, dispatching is different because the state doesn't pay for it. Oh. The communities pay for it and everybody does their own thing and we happen to have a regional dispatch here. But, you know, lots of times it's a police department with, uh, you know, somebody that's doing bookkeeping and dispatching at the same time. So, so but we, if we can maintain it. We have a very, if you look at what's happening in some of the other um, uh, communities in the state, we're, we're squared away, all of us here. And we're squared away because of support we've had from our communities for many so years. So. Do you have a car for each officer now? Or? Yeah, I don't think I have one for. I, I we'll, we'll come up with one for Eddie when he gets out of the police academy. You know, sometimes we use our reserve program, which is our what used to be the part time deputies. So we've got a bunch of cars there. So, and that that's the thing with us is you know if you get an accident or or something, you're, you're probably going to get more than the people you know, in, in patrol, you're going to get, you know, my, my court officers that aren't working that night or something like that. And so so they, they we're, take, we're able to put a lot of people out. So you take your cruisers home. They do. The I patrol guys. One do time that. you were parking them over to, we were parking them, but then what would happen is you got a accident on Willow crossing. The guy's got to drive through the accident, to come and get his car. No, then he's no, got to take, the snow off of it and it, it just yeah we were more sense. we're more closely aligned to the way the state police does the rule thing than say a village department where people go pick up their cars at the station right. so do you guys live pretty local we've got overall we've got one two in chittenden county we've got uh, somebody in orleans county oh so that's Three, good so they're coming four. that way and coming that way so we got four. Right. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? On each Definitely. end of Franklin County. Yeah, I think maybe we have. So we're kind of as a patrol guys, that. we probably have Watson lives in the area, and Scott, you know. But the others live enough on the outskirts of the area where if they have yeah. their car and they're coming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In, in, that, that's that and that's, thing. that's That's been. So Cambridge is, must be there. They, they, um, state, state, they're state, state police. Based. They have an office down there, don't they? They got a, or, uh, they got a, a office in the fire in department. The fire department yeah. Yeah. State police do yeah. down there. Yeah. 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 But, you know, we've got a deal with, with Eden, which we've had for two or three years now, where if we go up there, they pay us. Okay. And we maintain the scene until the state, state. gets there. But that can go a little sideways because the state finds out, oh, they're up there, and then they don't show. Yeah. yeah. 
And we had that the other night in Elmore, you know, with a mental health case. Oh, so do you do the same thing with Elmore as well? Oh, Elmore is a little bit different okay. where when I first got here, they asked, can you come up here just for 20 hours a month to help with radar and slow cars down? They had the state and the state was a little shorthanded then too and couldn't do it. So we, we took that over. So, but what happens with those and the reason I don't care for those is people get mixed up as to who their primary law enforcement agency is. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, but Elmore, you know, we got a good, good rhythm going with them. So. Yeah. But. Hey, Roger. Um, <laughs> yes. Ron here. Just had a quick revisit of ARPA. Just to be clear, when you presented some appropriation request or some idea to the other towns, was it specific to the cruisers, like uh, the, just the capital purchase of that for another couple of years or something? I think that Susan really had the lead on that idea. And if I'm correct, I believe, Susan, you mentioned like 120 for two years or something like that. So, I'll yeah, let, no, I'll, I'll let Susan answer. You know, yeah, she's not she's not in front of the screen right now, but I, that that's fine. That's a good enough answer for yeah, me. I just okay. I, what I was getting at was that with the ARPA f funding available, and for as long as I've been in Hyde Park, you've um, been trying to solve the retention question. You could maybe represent to the towns the concept of the retention program that you want to do for the three years left on the ARPA money so that you can initiate, you know, from two or three different angles, how to build retention and, and deal with that issue, not with the capital piece, you know, kind of change the flavor a little bit. It might, it might make more sense since retention and, you know, training investments, those kind of things all are things that you're doing and want to do. Um, and ARPA could support a program. So don't don't think of it as a just throwing money, but think of it more as a comprehensive program to attack two or three different angles. And if the legislators solve the 20 year, 30 year retirement thing, uh, the combination of those two might solve that retention problem that you've perennially, perennially faced. So Ron, what you're talking about is perhaps a, something aside from any one of these line items uh, um, with an eye towards retention. Yeah, I would, I would, from what you've said tonight, I think, and I think it's partly true. I mean, this is a, as far as I can tell, as far as I can tell, it's a long-term service for the towns and each town sees it as a, a fee for service and longevity and stability makes sense. The, the kind of covering or short-term payoff of a capital item or uh, tasers or those kind of disposable assets aren't nearly as valuable as your your personnel. So right. how do you make investments and system changes from two or three different angles to, to solve the retention thing? Uh, you probably have some ideas, but you know, the, the combination of that retirement issue, hopefully moving forward and maybe an interim retirement plan for retention plus the, the pay adjustment uh, for the longevity bonus, those kind of things could all be combined into one program asked for the towns that they would support and, and deal with that separate from your sort of operating expenses. Right. You know, Ron, another thing for you to think about is you've been pushing for that um, ordinance deputy or I forgot how you used to, to term it. That's a, it's a code enforcement, you know. Yeah, code enforcement. So is that something else you want to think about? Yeah, I mean, we face that every every day, you know, with phone calls for animal control or noise or fireworks or burning trash or, you know, all those things that people want immediate service on. And we don't really have anybody dedicated to that. So, I mean, that's another $100,000 ask, but that's something that potentially could relieve your people from those duties uh, for retention purposes. Yeah. So, yeah, there's all sorts of places to spend the money. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was just trying to change the flavor from the disposable assets to the people asset. Yeah, right. right. 
Yeah. Because you could pull that from some of the operating to lower well, that. Well, it sounds to me stuff. like that's something that the you you all need to you know discuss and um, you know see what direction you want to go. The only thing I guess the only pitfall with throwing ARPA towards one of these line items is you know down the road as opposed to taking it out of your you know the tax base or whatever is someday you have to take it out of the tax base and yeah it's going to be or later. sticker yeah, shop supported. here or whatever so yeah Dick, yeah part, part of ARPA is softening the blow from the obvious I mean there's people that can't hire anybody that yeah that may reduce the budget but if you don't want to lose the service you're gonna to have to pay that bill at some point well, so yeah you know that's exactly what we see in other police departments uh you're seeing of quite a few police departments that were 24 7 now don't have enough people to do the midnight shift so they're turning to the state police to do that state police don't have a midnight shift so they may you know have to get be called out or something along those lines but at the end of the day once you start losing control of your communities because for whatever reason you haven't been able to staff uh, uh, your police force, then it's going to be darn hard to get it back. And we'll see how. What happens in Burlington? We'll see what happens in Burlington. Yeah. Okay. Tough. Um, Brian, who is who? Who is our rep going to be for the communications budget meeting? I think it's me. We have a volunteer. Okay. Yeah. And I actually like to do that. Yeah. Like dorkiness. Communicate real well, too. <laughs> I tried to. So that meeting, the way we got it arranged is it's about an hour before the county budget meeting so that people okay. that wanted to go to the county budget could walk over, you know, walk over the courthouse afterwards. Okay. Usually there's all of two people there for that. Keep, keep me informed. Oh, and, absolutely. And, you know, Come, yeah. When is that meeting? Do you know right yeah. off the top of your head? Yeah, I think it's December 9th. Let me look. It should be a month. That's a Friday. Okay. County budget meeting is December 1st. Okay. At 7 p.m. Communications budget is 6 p.m. Okay. December 1st. Perfect. What's the times again? I'm sorry. Six for the communications Six, okay. and seven for the county budget meeting. The county the communications budget will be at the sheriff's department. Yeah, I do it, and then it looks like the meeting started in December and it ended. In oh, March. I know, no, but end. I know. <laughs> Just one straight line. And then Karen and those guys are looking at me like, <laughs> <"He's back." laughs> uh, So to kind of recap here, give me a second. So typically, the town of Hyde Park does a three percent increase, but you're looking at maybe doing eight percent or meeting halfway in between doing a five percent after communicating with other towns. Right, six. And, and I, I would say typically we do three percent. Typically we try because that was the cost of living. Yeah. So and that's always so sometimes in the past it's been over that. Sometimes it's been a little under that. Like communications budget is up seven percent. Right. But the last Six years, I think, we've averaged 1.98 percent. So, mm -hmm. not that yeah. we're talking about what like, you need to pay a lot more at one time. Yeah, it's a pay me now or pay me later, yeah. you know, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Oh. The cops grant that one was the 75 percent at year one. Year one, and then 50-50. Yeah. And then 25, 75, and then the fourth year, the sheriff's department is fully. We have a fully funded employee through the budget. And 
would be 11%. 11% inflation. Retirement is that no. it is not so we for several years we've been trying to get our employees on par in terms of retirement with other municipal employees and the state police. We have a 30 year retirement now, and those other departments have the option of leaving at 20 years. So we have been getting hail now from the treasurer's office. There's a new treasurer coming in. We now have the support of the legislature, and hopefully this year we'll make that transition. The trade-off for the employee is, is that they got to pay more out of their checks for this 20-year, 25-year Hopefully they'll see the benefit of it, they'll be fine. Well, it's yeah. them that... Yeah, they're going to be benefiting from it in a lot of them, so... Yeah, and, the, and, it, and if we're in Deemers, the municipal, retirement system, it means that there's no mandatory retirement. The state has mandatory retirement. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. We'll do what we can to support you. No, right? Absolutely. No, I, Most always, definitely. Always appreciate Hyde Park. It's for sure. We appreciate you. That's I'd right. still live here if it wasn't for my wife. Making me move up to the city. <laughs> the city. <laughs> city. I was going to say mud city. <laughs> Yeah, let me know anything uh, um, that you need to know and everything. Till so, so see you the first. Absolutely. Listen. Yeah. Coffee when you're not doing anything. So, I don't know. I imagine you're busier and I'll get ill. He's retired though. Yes. Well, He's retired of, working on A lot of time. people are retired and busier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Exactly. That's but it's what I want to do. There that's, you go. That's, that's what key. retirement does. Exactly. It gives you the maybe relieve some stress and do something fun. That's right. What I want to do. That's mm -hmm. right. And when you want to do it. I get a good gig right now. Yeah. I'm working for Nick. Oh, really? Yeah. Ready to quit another? Yeah. Yeah, good. So I'll probably end up there since I'll be on the end of a shovel or something. <laughs> well, that's working for me. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> but I'm retiring anyways. 163 days. Yeah, but you know who's counting. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's like a thousand or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. You Thank were going to do it Thank two you. years ago. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. Bye. Thank you, Raj. Yeah. yeah, we need to do something to support him. Especially having only one patrol officer on me at night, it, it's going to be That's scary. Am I understanding this right that the town of Hyde Park raises around 481000 for the sheriff's department? Raises? Yeah. Or within the it says the assessment. Hyde That's Park. what we would have to contribute. That's our portion okay. of the budget. Well, the Northeast Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he served, the, the sheriff serves Johnson, Wolcott, and Hyde Park. Uh, yeah. And then that's why we asked about Elmore and Eden. That's the, in Cambridge, their state police covers their areas. So. Uh, Ron, we're all set with the highway department for right now, or we still got more to discuss with them? No, we're good for now. We'll be back on the uh, 22nd meeting. Okay. Okay, administration, job duties, discussion, planning and zoning position. All right. So in the staff packet, there was a quick, relatively short overview of costs related to creating a planning and zoning position at the 18 to 24 um, hours per week and the costs for that. The benefits are also summarized, which is, a, is allowing a decent level of service to remain for that position with those hours and allow somebody to focus on that it's, it's kind of a skilled, trained position. Um, can't guarantee they're being be interested in 1824 from what I've seen with multiple ads going out from towns, extended deadlines coming out from towns, but 
I know that the position is eventually filled. Uh, right now I'm filling it obviously, and I can see some deficiencies there. And I think the, the members generally are served well, but I know, I know that they could be served better if there was more time allocated to that kind of a focused work, you know, think of a DRB subdivision application that needs almost a legal review in some regard and in other regards, it needs to, you know, look at the 172 pages in the zoning bylaw and, you know, other federal and state rules. And sometimes I, I know that off the top of my head, but I don't profess to be an expert in every rule, but I don't have the time to focus on it either. So if the planning and zoning world were to be um, separate out of the current town administrator job, then you know, it does two things. It allows the planning and zoning person to focus on planning and zoning and not human resources. Um, and it allows the town administrator to do more of whatever you are thinking that the town administrator should be doing, which, in, you know, obviously is grants and project management, community development projects, as well as a sort of a increased focus on highway um, task, which is, you know, 70% of your budget. So, the, the concept is there. That's why I didn't want to spend too much time on it because the concept is there. And if you're going to incorporate any changes in the town's budget for 24, uh, that this is the time to do it as we've been talking to, to look at these job descriptions and change things up a little bit um, and try you know, not to create a whole bunch of full-time positions, but uh, have part-time positions that uh, people do fill eventually. I mean, there's, towns that share people, regional planning commission, and I don't know, St. Albans has a multi-town zoning administrator. Our regional planning commission in Loyal County doesn't do that yet, but then not everybody here has zoning bylaws. The other option is to get rid of planning and zoning regulations, which I don't think would be popular with people, uh, but that's, that's one option. If you're going to have the bylaw, you have to have somebody to administer it. So that's more of a you know, it's a continuation of this discussion we've been having pretty much every meeting, um, but just kind of looking for thoughts from everybody. I see, it looks like Susan just left, but I don't know if that means she had a problem or I didn't hear her sign off. Oh, she's back. Okay. I'm, I'm here. I just vanished for a few minutes. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's, I'm just leaving that there and looking for some feedback. So, and I think the other thing we want to do, right, is still talk with Mark. I see you made a note of that as far as the highway. Yeah, that was the other piece that we wanted to get out appropriately. Yeah, we definitely want to talk to Mark. I, I mentioned to him today that he needs to plan some time to get down to the meeting on the 22nd because most of that's going to be highway. Okay. We're going to have a, a full budget review of highway um, with some of these capital items that we talked about tonight, as well as um, how you want to restructure the highway staff. Do you want to get that fifth person approved? Do you want to go for six people? How do you want to deal with your summer labor? Do you want to have a superintendent versus a foreman or both? All those kind of things that we touched on last meeting need to be really fleshed out with everybody in the same room okay, talking about it. Okay. And then these other two positions on here, plus the highway, that's pretty much... I don't want to say that's it, but that's your job in a nutshell right now, right? Carving it all out. Yeah, Justin's taking part of it. This right, planning right. and zoning would be a combo, one person job, okay. and then the revised town administrator position for whatever number of hours you're thinking. Okay. I have a question. So for planning and zoning, do you need to have experience or is that something that could be trained while in the position? Yeah, that's, that, that's a good question. I think the the town's workload, so to speak, for planning and zoning is not overly burdensome with a lot of commercial and highly technical industrial type projects. So we pretty much have a residential development town, which is relatively straightforward. Uh, most people that get into the planning and zoning worlds have either some basic college degree, and there's so many different facets of planning and zoning from architecture to engineering to land use planning to natural resources that most planning and zoning people come with one of those and they learn the rest. 
So it could be, you know, totally like a legal background is good, a, a natural resources background is good, um, and in those kind of things. And then the LCT and and colleges offer plenty of training to, you know, round off the person as far as advising boards and committees. So yes and no. I mean, there's some basic skills that are helpful to have somebody as a candidate, um, but. There's plenty of training and education that doesn't need to be a degree that can help uh, help the person perform well in that job. What about subcontracting that out? Would that be oh. <laughs> um, typically you're typically you're not going to pass the contractor employee test on that kind of job because there there's something that's not special about that job. Best. They don't they, they're administrative position like that is really hard to pass the subcontractor world. I know on a temporary interim basis, people do that. They'll hire somebody on a contract basis for very short term. Okay. Uh, but generally speaking, the long, long term, it's more of a career position, okay. uh, not a contracted position. Probably better off when somebody just send them to the training. Well, I know, but it's only 18 hours a week. Who are you going to hire? I mean, it's kind of hard to not commit some money. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no. The, the, I, don't no I, I think that I think that's why the job description for the current town administrator was so large because you, the town decided to put everything in one bucket, so to speak. Gotcha. And now you're at the transition point where you don't necessarily need three full time people, but right. you need more than the one forty. Yeah. Got it. I think we got one. I know. I love trainings and learning more. So okay, perfect. It'd be a learning curve. But... <laughs> That's what Ron's for. Ron's here. To... <laughs> Justin wants me to stop talking, so I, we don't talk about that position anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of that. <laughs> I know, right? Okay. Okay, so we're going to go on to ARPA project priorities. Great yeah, I know, uh, Brian, just a point of uh, reminder, I guess, we, when we do the warrants, we had a memo from Jennifer, too, not to forget about. Yes, I've written it down here to, to uh, bring that up. So. Yeah, yeah, so the ARPA stuff is, I think we already talked about the biggest issue I've found with ARPA is, other than keeping the list, which is, you know, on the website, we, uh, we had that new concept of using the 200 for the fire sorry for the highway we've already allocated some to north Hyde park fire and to the north and north Hyde park water district so we we're doing pretty well in picking at it but we still have over six hundred thousand left to um, obligate by december of 24 that's the deadline to obligate projects with spending uh by december 26 right. so we're also looking at all the ventilation stuff right yeah, the ventilation stuff I'm guessing is in the 150 range. So that's not going to be a small project. Right. Anybody still thinking about drilling wells to deal with the water situation? One at the fire department. <laughs> yeah, that's a topic on itself. If you want to use the ARPA for uh, either individual or shared water systems, that's something that would need engineering and obligation money sooner than later because it's it's got to be explored. We could have a scoping study of some sort if you want to do more than just one well site to take the fire station off the, off the water system. Somewhat of a legal question too. I mean, I think there, there's a water, I don't know how the I don't know how the rules work or commitments, but I know the water line goes by there. They, the village needed an easement to put some kind of blow off valve on the town property. I don't know if that's completed yet. So anyway, there's, there's issues re regarding water supply that we could add to the list and we need to do some work on it pretty quick if that was going to happen. Speaking of fire department, when are we going to see their budget? Uh, waiting for a date. The Brad was going to work on it, and I think uh, North Hyde Park asked you to attend. Yeah, I saw that. So that that would be the meeting with the fire department with the town of um, Eden. So if you can make it out, I think it's December seventh on the agenda. Yep. So the town fire will come in 
Um, I don't think they're going to make it for the 22nd, but probably in December. Okay. And we haven't had any more ARPA requests, right? Since no, not since the list there. I mean, the sheriff is kind of the newest right. one with was starting to talk about it, and then the uh, and then the highway department for the truck. Okay. Ron, what time was the uh, seven? North, seven. Yeah. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Seven at seven. Seven at seven. Yeah, if you if you guys can concur that you'll be able to go, then I'll set that up with uh, Brent, and he can know that you're coming on the seventh. Okay. Are you are you both going to that meeting? Uh, let's see. I'm gonna try to make it. Yep, I can. I'm putting. Yeah, I think they'd like to see as many as can go. I will be all set. December 7th, I'll be all set. You will be? Yep. Okay. Me too. Yeah, I'm good too. Cool. Do I need to be there for anything? Or do they have their own person? Uh, that's a good question. Last meeting at the fire station, the uh, recording clerks was sent uh, for Eden minutes. So you're welcome to attend if you have that night off. I think it's a good experience to go up there. Yeah. Katie, we're going to go to the town wards and monthly finance memo. We've got the memo here. Did everybody read what uh, Jennifer sent out? Did you get it? I didn't. What'd she send out? Her investment proposal, right? Yeah. 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 This is the, yeah, the whole packet. This is what I turned out today. Yeah. Okay. You can have all that. We're going to give Roland a few minutes to uh, just review it. If we can make sure that uh, when anything gets sent out, that it's sent to Roland's what, Yahoo account, is it? Roland, to get. Oh, let the did Jennifer send it to us? No. Oh, well, no. Jennifer sent it out, but oh. I don't know if she didn't send it to. She sent it to the high tire account. Email address. I always send stuff to his. High Park? Yeah, yeah, should I not? High Park? High Park. No, so, but not, not the High Park. Not the High Park. No. Oh, the Yahoo one? Yeah. Okay. And mine's Gmail. For me. Go ahead. Like, talk to Brian. Go through it here. Tablet. Well, that could be why our communication lacks sometimes, huh? Because I'm sending it to the wrong places. <laughs> Probably the, thing should, probably the thing should be deleted. Uh, it should actually, yeah. then it wouldn't be as confusing. Yeah. yeah, Roland, you got email from Jennifer went to the Yahoo for you, so I don't know what happened there. That was on November 5th. She sent that out. You might have to ch maybe check junk, Roland, on your inbox to junk. see if that's so much junk. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm trying to improve communications. Do you want us to make paper for you and tell you to come pick it up, or is that better? Or how oh, do you? No, I've always got it. I just didn't get this one. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure you're getting them. So if you, I don't know if you got junk or spammed on it, because it might have been the first one you got from her that might have picked it up and thrown it somewhere. Oh, true. That could have put it in spam because she wasn't in your contacts or something. Junk. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Jesus, I'm going to take me an hour to go through this. Go to the <laughs> Is there an extra copy? No, I can. I'll resend it to you, uh, Roland. I just want to make sure that that it works. So I'll just I'll resend it to you right I, now and then. Uh, I've been getting them right along. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> Yeah, this uh, email is just called finance investment is the subject line. Is Jennifer also the town treasurer? No. no. Okay. Kim Mullins, the treasurer, the town treasurer and the town clerk. Okay. Well, it's not my junk mail. Oh, I don't know. 
It's been all right. This is the first one I didn't get. I... Did you see the one that I just sent you like um, 10 seconds ago? Yeah. Yep. Got it. Okay. So that's the same one. There's investment policy in there, some payroll services changes she's making or recommending. I think we can take the payroll part first. Let's look at that and, mm -hmm. and see. And I think it was a good idea. She's uh, found that uh, uh, a cheaper way um, to get the payroll done. And, and efficient. What, looks where's, like, yeah, yeah, there was a layout here. She had mm -hmm. of, um, Whatever is easier for her. Assure. Exactly. Assure was the one, and they came in that there was a breakdown of all three. So I put the summary on the screen there for. Uh, there we go. That's the one I'm looking for. And so current the Nemrec is fifty four twenty five, and she's brought in two. I uh, looked at two others, and they're sure is at forty uh, forty seven ninety two. And I love the HR online. That's pretty handy. And the startup is uh, a lot shorter. Uh, it, yeah, three to four weeks. Do you know if she's used a shore before in her past job? Uh, no, she was doing That's research. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure who she used before, but I know she talked to the village office and Karen there was happy with the shore. Oh, they use a shore? Oh, okay, good. Okay. I like the idea. Yeah, I mean, if it's making her life easier and it's cheaper, it's kind of a no brainer, right? You're saving money. Right. She's the one that's got to do it. Oh, and I see. Again, like Karen. I said, look, look at all the options that we currently are getting them right. Right. Huh. Yeah, I like that. So, do we need a motion for this, Ron? Yeah, action or no or? Yeah, she's. I think she's asking for your approval to uh, have her authorized to make the changes that she needs to make. One of them will be getting out of the Nemric contract. The second one will be assigning the new Assure contract, and. We don't need to be too specific because I'm I'm pretty sure she's finalized and, and comfortable with all this stuff. But if she talks to Nemric and they throw her a curveball, she may have to delay something, et cetera. So I just want to make sure she has some flexibility and, and moving towards a shore. So if you authorize her to um, process the change from Nemric to a shore and sign the uh, contract not to exceed, you know, 5,000 for the first year or something like that. So we'll. Yeah, second. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And be opposed, abstaining. The ayes have it. And if Jennifer is listening to this, <coughs> thank you very much for that hard work and finding that out and save us some money. Right. And that's very good. And she wants to invest our money. So let's yeah. see what she's got to do. We'll look at that. that. I think she's got some great ideas. She really does. Yeah. 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 I am I look, yeah, I look not well through. versed in investment, so I know mine's taken off yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the C D this these CDs are a good idea. The motion was to use yeah. Azure PO services. Correct. To to work on the transition from uh from number to uh Azure. Azure. Yep. Any questions on the investment uh, that she's proposed? It sounds like we, if we need to get the money, we can get it. And the CDs and stuff like that, they're not uh, long-term, they're short-term uh, short investments and the money that we'll gain from it. Um, significant amount of print. Find it here again. One was eight, was ten thousand or something. Yeah, ten and then a twenty-five overall. Yeah, for the longer one. Yeah. It's a long, but uh, yeah, I don't know other people were going to take the notes out of it, stuff like that, from the 
It says here, I would like for you to consider investing 250000 of ARPA funds to be invested in a one-year CD with an estimated yield of return, return on investment of 10875 yeah. Right, and then for a total, yeah, and then taking the remainder for three to six months CD. Yeah. Because we'll need it a little sooner. That's for another return yield of about 15 k Ron, you know if there's a penalty if we have to get it sooner? Reason. There usually is with the CDs. Yeah. That's why I was recommending that she uh, don't go for two and three year type right. tool, you know, investment vehicles. Keep keep it fluid at those terms. Yeah. Three and you know, there's nothing there's nothing saying that uh, with more analysis we couldn't find additional funds, but a lot of it has to do with your capital planning. So yeah. if you say, for example, you know, split center road into two years, she'll probably be back saying, well, if you're going to do that, I got another 12 month CD for you. Right. True. Right. But for now, I'll have her keep coming back to you with these kind of memos and updates, because I think it's really good information. She spent a lot of time on it. Yeah. Um, a really high confidence in her work. So I think, you know, when it comes down to sort of nibbling at this investment thing, I expect to have her back again at some point with the same kind of, yeah, this is what happened actually, and here's what we want to do next kind of memo. Yeah. So this is something just to look at, or, or should we vote on it, or I don't know if it was action. Yeah, I think it's a it's a process where if you're good with the million dollars, which is the 250 and 750 uh, broken up into her scenario two, um, which is on page two of her memo at the bottom, you'll see scenario two. Yeah. Um, then she would proceed with that. And I believe it it's related to the investment policy. So this is part of it. So if you're okay with that concept and the numbers and how the capital expenses all work together and it's all good, then we have to turn to the investment policy to, to figure out exactly your answer to what has to happen. So if you want to pull that up, uh, she's also had a strike version of the investment policy amendments 2022. And I think I probably should have numbered sections here, but if you look at, oh, let's see. She's tried to follow this obviously, so. I'm looking for the actual approval process. And yeah, I'm looking for the actual who does the actual. The, the concept was the town treasurer and finance manager would get select board approval to make this happen. So I think what's going to actually happen here is that you would approve the million dollars split into those two amounts in scenario two and, and authorize the town treasurer and finance manager to make it happen. <laughs> I think that's your that's your role to review all this and, and authorize it to happen. I thought all the changes were good in it. I, I read through those. Yeah. I highlighted in the striked areas. A lot of it was just cleaning. It just that. just clarity, I think, is what she was doing. Yeah. And then uh, identifying roles. Susan's still looking at hers. Oh, yeah. Now she's looking at one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Susan? No, I read them and I, I think they're great. I was with Ron. I was looking to see. I don't think they're actually. Um, the investment policy is just a policy, it's not a procedure. Right. Yeah. And someplace down there, she talks about, you know, how the, how the town treasurer, the finance manager, sort of will come up with the with the procedures for who's to do it. 
Yeah. So I think the, the, I mean, the best control or internal controls to have many fingers on this stuff before it happens. So her recommendation is supported by your vote to proceed. And then the final action of actually getting the investment done is the combination of the treasurer and finance manager. State law sort of indicates town treasurer is responsible for making it happen. Um, your policy says that the town treasurer can do it with the you know agreement or support of both the finance manager and select board. So the town treasurer wouldn't do it by herself, but if the finance manager and select board support it, then it could happen. I think that's the idea that there'd be three entities reviewing this. I'd, I'm involved in the background stuff of the you know, making sure quotes are done to get the best rates, make sure the capital budget's getting sorted out so we know what term we have the cash free for investments, those kind of things. But I don't need to be involved in sort of the official action of doing it or having the approval of it. Right. And they, and they do quarterly reports as well, so we all know exactly what's going on. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, then I'm going to make a motion to uh, to scenario to have Jen continue the research and <coughs> moving of our money in scenario two, the million dollars into a CD based on her recommendations. Yeah, one or more one or more CDs, I think is good. One or more CDs. Okay, one or more CDs. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And then the second uh, action would be a, a vote to approve the amended investment policy. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll move we approve the amended investment policies. Yep, and I'll second that. Discussion. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining. So I have it. We adopted the changes. In the investment policy. You have another question. <coughs> I'll wait till you get. We're going to give Justin just a minute here. We'll make sure it's documented properly. A motion made by Chassie to have Jen continue the research and movement of Hyde Park money in, in scenario two into one or more CDs. Okay. A motion made by Susan to move the amended. To approve. To approve the amended. The amended investment policy. Yes. Correct. Good job. Good job, Good job Justin. Justin. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we appreciate you getting the clarity and stuff. We want it right too. So. Does he want that? Yeah, let's give him that. Whoops, let's throw it on the door. You got it? Because yeah. that gives you a little more. That's like the scenario and things like that. Yeah. So that might help. Yeah, like for paper versus the phone. And exactly. Mm -hmm. You're lucky you can see the phone. Thank you, get Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then the warrants. Uh, Rowan is working on signing them. Working on signing them, yep. Yeah. And then uh, we'll approve those. Maybe if the board gets a chance, we can give Jennifer a call and tell her how much we appreciate the uh, work she's done to try to generate some more money and keep that positive flow going. I think she'd appreciate it. So she's going to be working remotely Tuesdays and Wednesdays through November. Oh, so she's going to take Mondays off, right? Is that what that says? I'm confused. Michael's take Mondays. No, she's up. Her schedule is she's off Monday. She's in office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and she's off. Um, well, kind of like a half day Friday and Saturday morning she works. So it's kind of a fluid, a fluid schedule. But if you want to find her, it'd be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Got it. for the planning position for the zoning planning coordinator 
I was thinking maybe Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday afternoons. I would just dedicate myself to being here with Ron and whatnot. And just come right to the meeting afterwards. Oh. Right here. No, I got a little hot too. No, jeez, I was chilly and I think the heat turned on and off. Okay. It's pretty steady for me. So where do you think, Ron, Justin's idea of doing some work on the, uh, um, the, the, the uh, zoning and planning? Zoning, yeah. What you trying to say? Oh, I didn't. I didn't hear it. I didn't know if you were talking to you or to, to the to the mic. <laughs> I was kind of talking to them, but I was thinking about that position for zoning and planning, and doing that Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesday Wednesdays afternoons, like twelve to six or five or something like that and going into the meeting right afterwards oh yeah no i was i was thinking that we would try to do normally if we're doing a public um, position we we do the advertising for any kind of permanent position there's temporary positions and you'll find this in the personnel policy but if you do a temporary position we can do it right away and then that person can kind of fill it while the advertising is going on. But for uh, for those kind of positions, which are really permanent career type positions, potentially we would normally advertise to be fair to the community because, you know, it's public positions are a little different than private positions. So private positions are a little more cutthroat and public is, you know, you get vested, you have public interests. People want to know that you advertise properly for the public position and all that business. So yes and no is the answer. The, I mean, if there's a transition period where you'd hire somebody as interim and then you'd advertise and whoever came forward would interview and you'd make a selection. That's the normal process. It's not quite normal to create a position and hire somebody and say, come start working. That's not usually what happens. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, but the, the person who does the interim can apply for the position. Oh, yeah. No, it's usually encouraged. And, you know, yeah, if you yeah. if you ever see a job advertised that says uh, advertisement date on Thursday and we're hiring on Friday, that usually means they have an interim person. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I just do process and it's just normal business, so to speak, versus anything unusual. You come up with a job description first, look at the budget impacts make sure that those are covered and probably talk to Mark French on the 22nd first as well. On, on the same line of thinking though, Justin, there is a outstanding project, which would, is an ARPA project dealing with planning and zoning. And I've, I've started it myself. We had an intern from the high school work with me last summer and we're, um, at a point of needing more time on that. So that's something we can talk about. It's a filing and organizational thing with online uh, posting of town permits. Oh, so that could be a little side thing that's really a special short-term project, not a permanent type position. That sounds like a nice introductory piece. I had to, you, you would probably know more about the town after that project than anybody on the select board or me included. Because you, you have to look at every parcel in town and try to figure out what the person's history was and all. No. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's kind of a historical job, but it's also something we've been. We actually bought the software to go online with town permits. We just haven't been, had time to upload the data yet to it. All the warrants. I'll make a motion to accept the warrants. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Aye. Have it. Great. Okay. Then the minutes. The minutes has, uh, had one uh, mistake in it or error. Um, when we voted, uh, Susan made the motion to reconsider the vote for the gravel pit um, or the property up there, Menard property. Um, Roland had voted, uh, had uh, said nay or whatever for the... Um, to open up the... Yeah. To reconsider. Sorry. Yeah, to reconsider. So it was four to the, uh, four to one. Okay. The voter should have been. So sorry, it's right, um, um, amend. 
the yeah. meeting minutes to for Roland to say nay or no and yeah. the voting. Yeah. Yeah. So should we do we make a motion to approve those as amended? Yeah, that's what Correct. that's what I was just gonna say. Yeah, you'd say uh, motion by somebody approve the minutes amending paragraph page number to say blah blah blah, seconded and voted. Okay. I will make a motion to approve the minutes from October twenty fifth amending um item one and the motion to reconsider um voting should have been four to one um as roland was um a no on that right on line 40. very good that's perfect <laughs> no, yeah. really, really seconded that justin okay you heard it. Oh, uh, any discussion <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining. Good. Aye. He's got it. Good. Moving right along. Um, <laughs> uh, under the other business. Um, let's see. December seventh. Uh, we already talked. Did we talk about that for the budget? We're gonna all gonna go up there and at the uh, Northside Park Fire in Eden. Yes, you did. I'll let I'll let uh, Brent. Lamphere know that most of the board's going to be able to make it. Yeah. And the flood resiliency uh, grant, Mont 100 North High Park, uh, deferred to March 20, 2023 round budget details. Yeah, so that, that grant application was uh, paired with another one uh, for, the, for the rail trail at the same meeting. The rail trail one went forward with a slight amendment uh, based on VTRAN's input. So that one's moving forward for possible December notice of award date. And that will include the, uh, hopefully the resolution of the ring corral <laughs> as part of that first project. The second project is the North Hyde Park Southern Gateway project, which deals with a couple houses in the flood zone that required a really formal budget on costs and plans and uh, owners consent paperwork and a bunch of other stuff I didn't have um, ready for that week's time slot. So the same grant round is twice a year. The next one's in March. So that's the that was the reason for the push. So it's just an update. Yep, that's all. Great, thank you. Uh, the Moyle Bo Valley Rail Trail Community Grant combined submitted as $38,000 project $7,600 local match. That's the Ring Corral project. <laughs> okay. So hopefully that'll get resolved. Yeah, orig originally that was a scoping study for the intersection and a and a pavilion design at the uh, ring corral, but the VTRANS recommended we deal with it this way so, so we can, yeah. first things first, I guess, is what they're basically saying. We'll do the scoping study for safety on Depot Street, and then we'll also look at the legal issues with the ring corral. Yeah, the ring corral. <laughs> I, I like that, the ring corral. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Are we done? Did we wrap it up? Did we do everything we're supposed to? Is there anything else anybody needs to discuss? Nothing for me. Well, great. Appreciate everybody's effort. Have a great evening. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you. See you soon. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'd say good night, Grandpa. I know. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night John Boy. <laughs>